This right here, my friends, is a Vietnamese noodle soup classic. It's spicy, it's full of so much amazing flavor. This is my version of Bun Bo Hue. So we all know about Vietnamese fur noodle soup, an amazing classic that I love. This guy though is kind of like, I think, way up there with the fur, um, but not as well known internationally probably, but um, one of my favorite ones from Vietnam. I have to say, like I can't stress enough how amazing this soup is because I really love it. So there's not really any easy way to pretty this up or anything. These are just pig's trotters. Uh, you'll need to go to your butcher, ask for these, see if you can get your butcher to slice them in half for you. They can do that really easily on their machines. That just will release a lot of the gelatin um, from inside the bones. So it's a pretty important thing. So pop those into your, like a really big pot. The biggest one you've got, you want it to be at least like six liters. <laughs> now we want to go in with um, some oxtail. So I've got um, oxtail that I've had my butcher also cut up into um, little pieces here. And now the first little trick here is that we want to kind of blanch these bones and get rid of the first bit of kind of scum that you get off um, the bones for the first time you boil them. Um, there's going to be a few non-Instagrammable, uh, you know, sections of this video, but don't worry, it'll be very beautiful at the end. <laughs> okay, so cover the bones with water. I'm going to use the word scum a lot in this video as well, so just be prepared. <laughs> uh, okay, now turn the heat on and you want to bring this to a boil uh, and then there's going to be a lot of scum on the top. <laughs> we'll come back to it, I'll show you. Hold on. So you can kind of see what I was talking about. Uh, this is the situation we've got right now. Um, I'm gonna pull these bones out. And so basically this first part is just about kind of like boiling off that first bit of gunk, if you like. And now you wanna empty out and clean up that pot. All right, so I've got a clean pot. Um, I've actually rinsed these bones as well. Uh, and now we're gonna get everything back in the pot with some aromatics. So bones go back in. And I want an onion as well, some ginger, and some lemongrass. So lemongrass really is one of the big flavors in this soup. Um, so I've got quite a few, uh, about six uh, stalks here. And just to make sure I'm getting as much flavor uh, released from those lemongrass stalks as possible, I am just going to give them a little bit of a bash, uh, just to bruise them a little bit first. You can see I've just tied them up with string. That just keeps them together and just easy to remove a bit later on. So that goes in. And a really good pinch of salt here. Now we add another lot of water here. Five liters. Uh, you can go a little bit more if you can, if you've got a pot that's big enough. Um, but I've got a six liter pot here, so five liters will just fit. Now turn the heat on uh, high to start with. And then once you can see that water just starting to simmer, Turn the heat down to about a medium and let that gently cook away for two hours. That's right, don't skimp, so your patience will be rewarded, I promise. All right, so here we are. I've actually been skimming the surface of this every so often uh, as that's been cooking. So I've just got a little bit more here that I'm gonna pull out as well. You're never gonna get all of the you know, bits, um, but the more you can kind of pull out, the better. It'll make for a really nice, beautiful sort of clear-ish broth at the end. Now the next thing I need to do here is I wanna cook uh, some beef shin. So when I made this with my Vietnamese friend a while ago, um, she had these really big sort of um, chunky bits of beef shin. Um, I could only really get osobuco, uh, which is a thin sort of slice across the bone um, of beef shin. And I think that's probably a lot easier for you guys to get in Western supermarkets as well. So that's what mine looks like. I'm just gonna pop that into our broth here. With the bigger pieces of shin, you do get like a nicer slice at the end. So, I mean, you know, still tastes the same. It's just, you know, don't get, you don't get the big slices, but I'm okay with that. Now at this point, I am going to top this up with a little bit more water, just so it comes almost to the top again. Now just keep this bubbling away another hour and a half, and then we'll come back and see what's going on. What have you been doing for the last hour and a half, Dax? Just been sitting on the couch, twiddling your thumbs, or you've just been playing Minecraft, yeah. haven't you? What level are you at? <laughs> are they even called video games these days? No, just games? Just games, right? I don't know. I'm so uncool. I should just stop talking about those things. <laughs> 
All right, so my broth is like almost done here. What I'm gonna do though is make what's called the satay um, first before I get back to the broth. So what you need to do is start out with some oil. Vegetable oil or peanut oil is fine here. Just a neutral tasting one though. Don't go in with olive oil. It's got too much flavor and it's not an Asian flavor. <laughs> um, okay, now some garlic. And I want some finely chopped lemongrass here as well. Now the idea here is we want to flavor the oil, but you definitely, definitely don't want to burn or over brown the, or brown the garlic at all. Uh, I'm going to go in with some chili powder as well. Just give that like two minutes or so to kind of, you know, collect all the flavor, get everything making friends in there. All right, so I can smell the garlic now and the lemongrass. That's telling me this oil is ready. Uh, I'm going to add now uh, what's called annatto. So um, annatto, typically you would use annatto seeds for this, but I couldn't find any seeds in my local area, but I could find this annatto powder. Um, so I'm going to use the powder today. So that's probably a good tip. If you can't find the seeds, maybe you could use the powder. Uh, if you can't get a hold of either, uh, what you want to do is use some sweet paprika because that's going to give you that red color um, Probably won't give you it won't give you the exact same flavor, but you'll at least get that lovely red vibe going on So let's get back to our stock now. So we're kind of like almost there What I want to do is pull out our beef shin or your osobuko, whatever you've got that you're using And I also want to pull out all the other little bits and pieces the oxtail, the trotters. And you'll be surprised at just how much flavor there is in all of those little, little fragments of meat there on the bone. Um, so don't waste it. What I'd like you to do is just let that cool down until you can sort of handle it with your fingers um, and pick off all of that meat. It's so tender, it should literally almost like fall off. Okay, so I've got most of the kind of bits or large bits out of my broth now, but I do want to strain it. So I've got this little setup here where I've got um, a fine mesh strainer, but I've also put some muslin cloth in there uh, just to really strain out all the little fine particles from my broth. All right, so now you should have a really lovely, it's like kind of like, kind of like a golden colored broth here. You can see the flavor. Now we've got to do the little finishing touches. So um, this is kind of what I would call seasoning this broth. Um, if you're not someone who is used to eating a lot of shrimp paste or you think that you're not gonna like that really funky flavor, you wanna tone it down a bit, then maybe just go in for like, the, like about half of the shrimp paste that I'm calling for in the recipe. You can always go in with more, but I like more. <laughs> so I wanna like dissolve the shrimp paste a little bit first. I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of water. Drink this for a thousand bucks, Dax. I considered it. A thousand dollars. That's an expensive bit of content. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, your shrimp paste mixture is going to go into your broth here. Now the other little secret ingredient here, well it's actually not so secret, um, my Vietnamese friend that I make this with uh, also uses this. I mean, I call them stock cubes, flavoring cubes. Um, even though we've made the stock from scratch, uh, we still Put this in. It's the MSG. <laughs> That's the magic ingredient. <laughs> it is what it is, like, you know, Asian street food. Now you also want some fish sauce here as well. So, I mean, you know, you can't be seasoning things, Vietnamese or Thai things. Um, that's the one thing we share in common, I think, without some fish sauce. Okay, but we're not finished here yet. What we want to do is get our red oil mixture going in here. Oh, now the one thing I've got to say earlier is I used powder here, so I don't have to strain this, but if you were using annatto seeds, um, you would need to strain the seeds out um, before you add the garlic and the lemongrass and stuff because you don't want the seeds in the soup. So there you go. Um, but let's get this in here. And now you have that beautiful, characteristic Bunbo Hue colour, that beautiful red oil on the top. That is 
what you're going for, my friends. Uh, soup broth is done. Let's get our noodles cooked. So the traditional noodle here is, um, it's a rice vermicelli noodle, but if you have a look here, um, Search out the rice vermicelli that's specifically for Bun Bo Hue because if you have a look in here, it's actually a rice noodle that's round. So typically you kind of get pad thai noodles or pho noodles. It's like spaghetti and rice noodle kind of mixed together. It's a lot chewier, um, has a really beautiful texture. It's really worth seeking out. It's very different. Okay. And actually these take about like 15 to 20 minutes to cook, uh, believe it or not, uh, but they do. <laughs> so just let those cook until they're nice and tender. All right, so once your noodles are cooked, you can just drain them off. Oh, they really have such a cool texture, I love these. And now we can build our bowl. And now ladle over that soup. And then here's the thing, you're never quite finished with a, an Asian noodle soup bowl. You always need the condiments. So um, first up, I want some spring onion on here. Some Vietnamese mint. So it's called Vietnamese mint, sometimes called laksa leaf as well. If you can't get a hold of um, the Vietnamese mint, just use regular mint, but um, it really has a beautiful flavor. So if you can search it out, that'd be great. Some bean shoots, coriander leaves, and a little sprinkling of some fried shallots. So there you go guys, my version of Bun Bo Hue. Uh, I haven't eaten this since I was in Vietnam and I can't get there right now, so I am ridiculously excited about this. I cannot wait. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that flavor is just like oh, out of this world amazing good like it is so it's just got this like slight amount of heat to it it's not overpoweringly spicy but you get like the beefiness the funkiness all the things it's so good and the herbs like when you add those extra bits and pieces the herbs um, even the lime juice and stuff just taste it to a whole new level Mm. The whole thing. It's just like perfection. So young. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, why not hit the like button? And even better, I would love so much if you would subscribe and even hit that little bell button so you get notified every time I release a new delicious video. Thanks guys.